Daryl Bem is going to uh, treat us to a kind of skit reenactment of the Stanford prison experiment. <laughs> Since it's Halloween, it made finding costumes a, a wonderful thing to do. So I thought we would do a Halloween reenactment of two of his, two of his uh, famous experiments. One, the individuation experiment, which showed that if you use masks and you know did not refer to people by name, it deindividuated them and made them behave in ways that were uncharacteristic of them. And then, of course, the prison study whose main notion was that personalities do not create the roles, the roles transform personalities. And so that's what we thought we would do. So we never skimp on production values. <laughs> so we're going to need volunteers and we're also going to need more costumes. I'll get the other two. Okay, we have a, we need a, a prisoner, and we need a guard, and we need a volunteer. Do we have a volunteer? We seem to have a volunteer. And your name is? Susan Johnson. Yes, I think I met you earlier t in, the, in the foyer. Is that right? Yes, that's right? And you're a faculty member here? That's right. I'm an assistant professor. Okay. Well, this should guarantee you tenure. <laughs> okay. Would you, as you may remember, in the prison experiment, we use a very high-tech method of randomly assigning people to either guard or prisoner. So uh, let's, let's do that random assignment now. Open it up. And what's it say? Guard. Oh, lucky you. Okay. <laughs> Would you please get into the guard uniform? Okay. Uh, there's supposed to be a baton with this outfit. Um, I think it's backstage. Just go get the baton. It's on the table. This. Okay. Okay. Now, you need to lose your identity. And so you are no longer Sue. And you are now the guard, Madam Guard. I am now the guard, Madam Guard. OK. And now we need a volunteer. Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> and your name is? Greg Larkin. And you're a student? Uh, no, I'm partly responsible for Phil's uh, two-part, 200-slide colloquium talks. <laughs> okay. Okay, you get to play the role of prisoner. Yes, that's it. You may want to take off your shoes. These are $14.95 costumes, so made of... That's as far as you need to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
and you get a very special prison mask. The reason the guard looks like a prisoner is there don't seem to be any Halloween stores that sell, uh, sell guard costumes, so it's also a prison one. But the baton should distinguish the guard from the prisoner. Yes, good. Why don't you just put that backstage? And your shoes. Well, we'll leave the shoes here. Okay, you need to lose your identity. So you are now going to be, let's say, Peter Prisoner. Can you say Peter Prisoner? Peter Prisoner. Okay, good. I think we're ready to begin the reenactment. Okay. Um, guard, your prisoner is being unruly. I think he needs a little bit of punishment. Okay. okay. <laughs> A typical reenactment of what took place in the prison experiment. Now, let's do a post-experiment debriefing. Did uh, Peter Prisoner, did this experience in any way change you? I feel different. <laughs> what? And, and what about you, guard? Did it change you at all? I feel different, too. <laughs> now, of course, one of the aspects of the prison experiment that very few people appreciate is an experiment this intense changes the investigator as well. <laughs> what, Warden, what about you? Did you feel it's changed you at all? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>